Godot Aerodynamic Physics is a realistic aerodynamic physics plugin for Godot. I guess that's kinda explained in the title, but... The development of version 0.5 was heavily focused on ease of use. Aircraft control was one of the biggest pain points in previous versions. Configuring controls was done manually and sometimes required complicated scripts. Version 0.5 has a new control system to alleviate these struggles, and there are a few new components as well as a few existing features that need documentation. To download Godot Aerodynamic Physics from the Godot Asset Library, start by locating the plugin in the Asset Library. Select the plugin and press Download. Once the plugin has downloaded, we need to be sure to change the install folder. The install folder must be changed into the add-ons folder under a folder called Godot underscore aerodynamic underscore physics. This extra step is necessary because it makes using the plugin in tandem with git submodules easier. Once the plugin has downloaded and installed, double check that it's installed to the correct location. Once that's all verified and working, enable the plugin in the project settings. Manual installation from GitHub is slightly more complicated. To start, navigate to the Godot Aerodynamic Physics GitHub page. Select the latest release from the Releases menu on the right side. Click the option to download Godot Aerodynamic Physics.zip. Once you have this file, extract all files into a folder called Godot underscore aerodynamic underscore physics. This Godot aerodynamic physics folder will need to be moved into your project's add-ons folder. Finally, enable the plugin in the project settings. To start, we will create a new scene and add an AeroBody 3D node as the scene root. I will also configure a collision shape for the arrow body. Arrow Influencer 3D is the base class for all objects that can influence the aerodynamic simulation. Manual Arrow Surface 3D nodes represent aircraft wings. I will use Manual Arrow Surface nodes to make the aerodynamic surfaces on my airplane. To adjust the size of the wings, I use the wing config that is available on each manual aero surface. Wing configs are resources, which means a single instance of the config can be reused on multiple nodes. This behavior can be undesirable, so you can use the make unique option on the wing config resource to unlink it from other resources. I will link a video with further explanation on Godot resources in the description. Mass is very important to aircraft feel. Make sure to configure mass on your aircraft to ensure that it behaves appropriately. On the topic of mass, the relationship between the center of mass of the aero body and the center of lift is incredibly important for aircraft balance. When designing your aircraft, the debug vectors can be incredibly useful for balancing the aircraft. It is ideal for an airplane to have the center of lift slightly behind and slightly above the center of mass. This is known as static stability. It keeps the airplane stable while also efficient and controllable. I will now take a moment to name and organize the aero surfaces that I have added. When prototyping aircraft, I will typically use CSG box nodes to visualize wing surfaces. Now that I am done with the prototype model, I will save the aerobody scene and add it to the project's main scene. For simplicity, the aerobody does not have any form of landing gear, so to test it, I will have to spawn it in the air. Now that the plane is put together, we can configure controls using the new control system. Add an aero control component node to the aerobody. This is the core of the control system. The control component has input variables that can be used to manually supply inputs to the control system. 
I use these variables in my VR flight sim project to use inputs from the virtual joystick. Controls are configured in two places, at the arrow control component node and at each arrow influencer node. When configuring an arrow influencer, max actuation is the angle that the influencer can rotate in radians in local space. Pitch, yaw, and roll contribution defines how much the influencer will rotate on each axis when an input is applied. These are listed as a percentage of the max actuation and can be mixed together. To use this to configure roll control, I have set the left wing to have a negative control response and the right wing to have a positive control response. This asymmetry will allow the airplane to roll. By default, the control component uses the arrow keys for pitch and yaw control. These default control bindings should be replaced with project specific bindings. For this, I have created new input map actions for yaw control. We can configure these input bindings by typing the action names into the yaw left event and yaw right event parameters of the control component. Godot Aerodynamic Physics provides a few options for aircraft thrust. The first and simplest option is the newly added Aero Thruster component. This component approximates the function of a jet engine. There are multiple parameters that can be used to influence the thrust calculation. The intake fan max velocity parameter is supposed to represent the intake air velocity when the engine is stationary. Max fuel flow is the maximum amount of fuel burned and added to the exhaust mass by the engine at full throttle. Thrust forces are applied at the thruster's position and point in the thruster's negative Z direction. Get throttle from aero body, if enabled, will cause the thruster to use the control system and control automatically. This can be disabled to make use of custom control setups. To configure throttle controls inside the control component, input bindings will need to be configured. Typically, cumulative control is used for throttle so that the throttle remains constant and doesn't require the player to hold down a button. The control speed of cumulative inputs can be changed using the cumulative rate parameters. Another interesting use for cumulative controls is control trimming. The other option for thrust, while not new to the plugin, was previously undocumented. I am referring to the Aero Propeller class. Aero Propellers physically simulate the rotation of any child Aero Influencer nodes. Without any Aero Influencers as children, Aero Propeller nodes produce no forces. I will use a manual Aero Surface node as the propeller blade. To make configuration easier, only a single blade needs to be configured. The Aero Propeller node will automatically duplicate the blade and arrange the copies around the propeller's Y axis. To make use of this automatic configuration, make sure that the Propeller Blade property is assigned to the blade on the Aero Propeller node. Because the propeller automatically duplicates and reorients the blade nodes, it is important to disable automatic control on the blades. For the rotation speed of the propeller, I have found that 150 radians per second is an average speed for a single engine aircraft. Propeller nodes are designed to rotate around their y-axis. This simplifies some of the math required, but also allows for easier configuration. Make sure to keep the propeller's orientation in mind when positioning your blades. Again, I will add prototype geometry to the propeller and blades to help visualize the position and orientation of the propeller. It will also help us to verify that the propeller is spinning in the correct direction during testing. Now that I am satisfied with the propeller, I will rotate it into the final desired orientation. The last step is to configure the pitch of the propeller blades. Luckily, the Aero Variable Propeller class handles this automatically. We can set the propeller pitch in the editor, or it can be changed from a script. For now, I will manually set the propeller pitch to 45 degrees. When the project runs, you can see that the entire plane is twisted due to the torque of the spinning propeller. We can visualize this torque when the debug vectors are enabled. The black vectors represent Aero Influencer torque forces. The torque caused by propellers is often not desirable for players, especially when using keyword controls for flight. 
As a developer, you may feel compelled to provide some sort of assist or accessibility feature that automatically counteracts undesirable forces. Flight Assist is incredibly useful for any situation that you need assisted controls. Setting up Flight Assist is as simple as adding a new Flight Assist resource inside the Aero Control component. The Flight Assist will now work to counteract disturbances and stabilize flight. However, it is apparent that the propeller torque is not appropriately being counteracted by the Flight Assist. We will need to modify the Flight Assist's parameters. In this case, the propeller torque causes a steady state error. To counteract this error, we will need to use the integral factor of the flight assist. This is also known as the steady state error response. When configuring integral gain, be sure to also enable clamp integral, as it will prevent the flight assist from going crazy due to excessive error accumulation. The response time could be faster, but the flight assist can now successfully stabilize the plane despite the propeller torque. As a final touch, I will add some camera movement effects that changes flight from this to this. It's easy to understate the effect that small pieces of polish like this have on a game's feeling but I think that the result speaks for itself. As always, demo project files are available in the description, as well as a link to Godot Aerodynamic Physics. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more about the Godot Aerodynamic Physics plugin or the devlogs for my VR flight sim.